So my name is Suresh. Um, so I, I work at United as an uh, principal architect in enterprise architecture. Um, so today I wanted to talk about uh, some things we've been doing in IoT, and some uh, I will learn, share some learnings there, and then also uh, talk about some things that we are going to be working on in the near future. So a little background about United. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> we are one of the largest carriers in the world. Uh, fly to more than 300 plus destinations. It's a pretty large fleet of about 1,300 aircraft, and uh, you know about 4,500 flights a day. That translates about 1.6 million flights a year. Uh, so last year, 143 million customers flew with us. So that kind of shows you the scale that we are working with. Um, so the rest of the presentation is going to be. Uh, sort of uh, guided with these uh, with these IoT layers that you see on the screen here, um, so that um, so you can kind of uh, map what I'm talking about to the different layers uh, as we talk about IoT stack. Um, again, everything we do is driven by some business needs. So uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, even in this talk, you will see that uh, all the applications that we have built are really centered around uh, improving customer experience, and um, that's what is actually driving all the uh, efforts, even in this IoT space. So the four areas that you see here, at the lowest level, you see um, the sensors, the devices, uh, that's the things, like the Internet of Things that you talk about, and the connectivity, which is in the fog, uh, what we call the fog computing layer. The reason for that is it's, it's something that is actually not within your control. It is things that are happening in the, uh, sort of in the edge. Um, so you can't really use that data directly, even though it's available to you. So you have to do some QA to get that information, do some analysis, and then make it so that it can be useful. The next layer that's called the cloud there, it's actually the, it doesn't need to be cloud, it could be your own uh, data centers too. But that's where you would be collecting this information, uh, storing, and uh, kind of doing the data ingestion piece of it. It's important to have a um, elastic, scalable infrastructure there because uh, we've, we've kind of learned through the hard way that if you don't provision enough resources in that layer, you can, uh, you can have a pretty bad experience in terms of uh, either for the customer or, uh, <clears throat> or for your uh, infrastructure if, if that, that layer is not well planned out. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is the, uh, the data analysis piece. Um, there you can analyze the data that is coming through these devices or you can combine it with um, other information you might have so you can create context and things like that and then uh, uh, use that, make that uh, get insights out of it, or use that information for your applications. And finally, the business value layer, which is where uh, now you're able to take that data and create applications, and um, and then eventually use that for improving the uh, customer experience. In our case, uh, so we wanted to get started with this, but in a pretty um, uh, uh, in, in a way so that it would be for, easy for us to test the waters with IoT. Um, and one of the easiest things we could do was uh, take the Bluetooth beacons and then um, try something with those. So what we did was we went to one of our hubs that, uh, that's in the East Coast, New York, and uh, took a couple hundred of these things and they laid them out in the airline terminals um, and then uh, just kind of uh, let them out in a way so that it had good coverage in, across all the gates and the common areas and uh, lobby areas and uh, so that if, uh, if someone were to walk by there, they would be able to you know, get pretty good coverage in there. Now to go with these things, uh, these devices are geotagged so that way uh, we, we know exactly if you, see, if you see a device and we see that unique identifier on them, we can tell uh, its, its, lo its actual location because we would have a registry that has the, uh, the GPS coordinates for those things. Um, the missing piece was the maps to go with it. Um, so if you had something like Google Maps for, maps for indoor space, this would be okay, but we didn't have that. So what we did was we partnered with the 
guys who did the Google Street View. A there's a company called Locus Labs. Uh, they were able to come in and then map the entire terminal. So they would create these very high resolution geocoded maps uh, across all the levels. That way um, we are able to now take those beacons and place them on actual maps. Um, and this is the application that we were able to create out of it. So we have the United mobile app. Uh, and this is actually something that you can use today. Uh, if you go to any of those hubs, um, you can, we can create a blue dot experience for you by overlaying your current location on top of that map. Uh, by, if, if your device is uh, set to share a location, it can start detecting the beacon data, that beacons that are around you, and then do some triangulation and then figure out exactly where you are in the, in the building and exactly which level you are in. This way, if you are looking to get to a POI, some point of interest, or to a gate, um, or anywhere you need to get to, uh, we can provide the directional information, or even um, you know, like walk times and things like that. Uh, behind the scene, this is what happens. If, a, if I have a mobile app, if I have the United mobile app, and I walk into the app board, it detects that you have crossed into a geofence, and then if you happen to walk by one of the beacons, if, and the phone is listening on that, it will pick up on that signal and then uh, start um, looking up against our backend web services to see where they are in the airport. So this information comes to us um, and we write, this is the current setup, so it goes through a Cloudflare proxy and then eventually into AWS Gateway. Initial, in the initial iterations, we had this information go directly into our data center and then go into a set of Kafka queues and that's the, that was in the beginning. But over the time, it has evolved into uh, what looks like this today. Uh, in terms of uh, what that looks like, in terms of data, so it's about 300 some million requests coming in just for one airport. And then uh, that's about 100 gigs of data. So you can imagine people just continuously pinging you with their current location and look, location lookups and things like that. It's quite quite massive in, in terms of very chatty, and then also um, if you start scaling this to all the airports, it's quite a bit of data. So that's why I said earlier, you need to make sure you have the right infrastructure to absorb this kind of traffic coming in, otherwise it could very easily look like a DDoS attack on you. Um, <coughs> so, you know, for this airport, for that time, it shows about 200 some thousand uh, unique visitors. That means you could have repeat customers because we have frequent flyers who will fly maybe eight, ten times out of a single airport. Uh, but as you can see, there's a very cyclical nature to the, uh, the, the, what the graph looks like. So it's, it's, it, that depends on the day itself. It depends on the time of the day. So it kind of goes up and down like this. Now, if you look at this data, like just, the, just this uh, data in aggregation, there's a lot we can glean from this. Um, and that's exactly what our data guys did. They were able to look at this information uh, and start making some inferences. This is around the time when, if you remember, uh, there was TSA was on the news a lot because you know, people are getting stuck in airport, couldn't make their flights with the long lines. So we were able to look back into our data and look at uh, what that looked like for our customers. And uh, start, you know, just start looking at, looking at the wait times as they pass through different parts of the airport. And we were able to generate these, uh, these statistics. So and then uh, look at what that looks like and have a meaningful conversation with TSA when uh, these problems came up so that um, we were able to make staffing decisions and then also provide that feedback to them. So this is looking into the history. Uh, but there was nothing that stopped us from, say, look at the data that's coming in and then say, what does that look like in real time? Uh, so in real time, we could, if we could, the same, same analysis we do for historical analysis, if we could just make it a little bit more real time, then I could start predict, basically tell you exactly what the, uh, wait times are right now as you're looking at an airport. So that's exactly what we did. Uh, we, we used the WSO2 uh, CEP processor and then plugged that in and it was able to look at this information coming in and uh, started doing, uh, basically generating this uh, 
metrics that showed based on each checkpoint what the uh, wait times were like. Uh, of course, we didn't stop there, so we started looking at, okay, can we take the historical data and the current data and start predicting into the future and see uh, what, what does that look like for, let's say, in two hours from now or maybe tomorrow, what, does the, what, what would the, uh, the wait times look like? And that is something we are testing now. So we started applying some machine learning models there. And um, this, was, this was able to then start creating some uh, uh, metrics saying, OK, uh, you know, for operational use and then also for our customers too, so that they can plan their trip ahead of time. So this is things you see uh, today with Google, Google doing this kind of thing with their Google Maps. This, this is exactly what they do. They're also able to predict your uh, driving times and things like that. So we can, this is one example of how we use this for TSA uh, checkpoints, but we can do this for a lot of other things too, even within an airport. Um, this is another use case. We, uh, so once we have that beacon infrastructure, uh, you, could, you could start come up in, coming up with lots of use cases, and this is another one. It's called the airplane turn management. So when an aircraft comes in, it completes one flight and it's ready to go for the next flight. There's a lot of activities that happen in between that time. Um, from refueling to maintenance work to you know, cleaning, all of that work, it needs to happen fairly quickly so that the plane can be turned around. So in this map, you can see uh, all the uh, aircraft that are parked at different gates. This is in Chicago here. And uh, the, uh, the thing over here is that it's tracking somebody, it's tracking a crew. So the idea here is we are able to track in a passive mode a cleaning crew, so that way, based on some rules that you write um, in, in, you know, by bounding it to the geofence, you can make some assumptions that uh, some activities have completed. So let's say that crew moves from there to the next gate, then you can safely say, okay, they're done with that task, they have moved on. And, and um, obviously, it, it requires a little bit of validation, observing exactly how, the, how these folks behave. So that way you can make those assumptions correctly. But, uh, but we had some success with it, and we are still continuing to test that model uh, with various uh, use cases like that. Um, this is another application. So um, this is an application where we are trying to build something that looks like Uber for requesting wheelchairs. And it's kind of showing right now what the, how you would make that request from a customer mobile app. And the dispatch system is going to then start looking for who's available to do that. And then it'll send that request to the uh, operators. No, it's in POC right now. So we'll be testing this in Las Vegas and Los Angeles. Um, the video was built, it was really done. We built it as a POC um, so that we could, um, you know. Uh, well, it's, I mean, uh, this presentation will be available so you can take a look at it, yeah. So you can see they come in, they scan your boarding pass, and that gives you uh, in real time what the next routing instructions are, where to take them. Because during that time, you are, maybe your gate changed, maybe your you know, flight status changed. Yeah, it uses the beacons to understand the, where the, uh, the PS agents are and then also where the customer is. Traditionally, the way you do this is you go, you have to walk up to a lobby and find a customer service agent and you gotta go through that whole process. Here, yeah, we're trying to automate some of that so you can make the request yourself. So this is a dispatch view, so they can also uh, look at the uh, status of a pending request or an ex uh, ongoing request. Um, what's what's the, this, the range of the meeting? Oh yeah, so in the earlier slide, it, it gives you a little, some metrics there. Um, generally, it can go up to 30 meters easily, but you can tune it down. Um, sometimes we have to bring it down to the lowest level in terms of signal strength, otherwise 
it gets picked up by even you know something that's far away. But um, there are things you can embed into application so that it does some triangulation based on signal strength. Uh, that way, that way you can get a fairly good accurate uh, positioning on you. So all of these applications were built just with that simple device of just having some beacons in there. It's not even network connected. It's just communicating to you in Bluetooth. Uh, a lot of other things, and by combining other information you have, you can generate context. And some of the things that we can, we're thinking of doing, uh, you know, with, with with this, and then maybe with some additional sensors, is uh, creating basically a context of our application. That means your mobile app, you don't have to necessarily start looking for things. It would know that where you are, and based on that, it'll automatically give you the next. You know, if if you're, let's say you're in a flight now, and then. Uh, you know, it'll tell you, okay, you need to go to this next gate. Or if you land, if you're in a connection, by the time you get off that flight, it can already tell you, okay, you need to go to this other place, and here's how you get there. Um, we're also looking at uh, the airport operations area in the ground, ground fleet management. Uh, so that, uh, oh, one of the things I forgot to mention earlier was <coughs> the beacons themselves are not the IoT devices here. It's actually a mobile phones. Uh, and what we've done is we've crowdsourced all of the data gathering, um, basically picking up the um, different metrics because uh, we're able to figure out flow rates and things like that. It's actually coming from the mobile phone. Uh, the beacons simply gives the, some uh, relative measure to the, app, uh, the mobile app or the phone, and, and that is what is actually being used here. Uh, the ground fleet management too could use something similar because uh, you know you could have some receiver on your vehicle and then as they are driving by we can see how they're moving around in airport and things like that. Um, you know, most almost all the airlines in the world they they have this thing called A cars, which is continuously transmitting uh, information about your aircraft uh, back to ground. Uh, and, and pretty much every part in your plane is collecting data in real time and doing this. So there's a lot of, lot of things we can do in there um, because it's a huge feed of data coming in with real time stats on them. Um, there are things you could do there perhaps with maintenance or other things like that. Um, and the other thing, another use case we've been looking at is the de-icing equipment planning. It's a big deal for us, for example, in our winter hubs like uh, Chicago, de-icing planes is a it, it takes up a lot of planning, and it's very hard to plan exactly how much fluid to carry and things like that. So, typical use cases in operations, but you know, little improvements here and there by adding some IoT into that, we could um, see some uh, uh, operational uh, benefits in there. So, these are the areas we are kind of looking at based on the uh, success we had with the uh, location uh, IoT. Um, so. So that's my uh, presentation. Thanks.